Hey, what's up guys? My name's Casper. I'm a mural artist that just finished up a huge six month project. This is in a little town right between the New South Wales and Victorian border in Australia. The project was basically to paint 10 murals in all different places. So underpasses, skate parks, walls, hidden bridges, everything. And I thought what better way to sort of just sum up such a huge project than to take you guys around and do like a mural art tour myself. So we're going to be driving around today all around Wodonga to check out all the murals. The first one was Mahoney's News Agency. Uh, the second one was Henry's Bakery and that's just over there. So we'll just walk over there and check that out. And then we'll jump in our car, go for a drive and check the, uh, the other eight murals out too. So with this being wall number one, it was really important to me to get it right. If the community wasn't into my style of artwork, it was going to be a really bad six months ahead. I wanted to paint something that would bridge the gap between maybe a more artsy type of person and just your average Joe Blow and Madonga. I did this by painting this huge Murray Cod. So this fish is sort of like a local legend. They grow up to huge sizes and live in the Murray River, which is local to this town. It ended up getting featured in their local newspaper and um, also getting on the local news. So we're going to head over to the second mural here and they're both really really close. It's awesome to have two pieces that are so central to the middle of town and two pieces that are super different. This one was themed around the Blue Wren and we seem to have a few problems with painting around the pipes and all the 3D elements that were coming off the wall. So if you look a little closely there you'll see they're all sort of painted in general colours. And we decided the best way to do this was to incorporate some community engagement. So some locals from the town actually painted majority of those areas in and helped out. And the outcome from that was uh, super positive and just gave the community like a feeling of engagement and a sense of ownership for this piece. And one thing that's really great about these pieces is you'll notice there's name tags on each one of them. I'll do a little zoom in if you want to pause and read it yourself, you can. But if you're just walking around the environment or you're ever visiting Wodonga, feel free to sort of find these here along the wall too because it'll tell you a bit about the piece and what it's titled. And if you want to see this full piece or any other full piece getting painted, use that little link at the top right and you'll be able to click right through. Right, next up we'll hit the third mural. It was at a place called Deli Bean. Um, but yeah, we'll jump on the road and we'll check the third one out. So you guys are actually going to be driving with me from mural to mural. And I think this will be pretty cool because you'll be able to see how far the murals are away from each other. And also the sort of like the type of environment that they're in. And here we are on mural number three. You'll probably see it as we turn this corner. I might even stop in at our deli bean here and grab a coffee. I can show you the mural and there's also a piece on the inside too. Uh, I painted a skateboard for him. So there's a skateboard piece and, uh, and a mural all themed around that sunflower. So pretty cool, small and big. And uh, they have really nice coffee too, so grab one of those on the way through. Each one of these murals were pretty site specific. I tried to be inspired by things in the local community and also be inspired by the store owners themselves. The biggest story that actually came out of this one was that they painted this whole building yellow. The community didn't really like it, but then slowly but surely they came to realize it was actually quite nice and eye catching. So I wanted to compliment this and just give it like a little bit of life. I thought perfect for this was a sunflower. Big yellow wall, big yellow sunflower, with a little bit of abstract flowing shapes throughout it. This has probably been the most popular mural out of all of them, and it was actually quite surprising to me. It was quite a quick wall, I painted it maybe in three or four days, and I guess just because of the location. When you look around the roundabout, everybody drives through it to get into Wodonga, and the wall's just so striking with the color. I was lucky with this one too to reach the news as well. And uh, here's the feature. Melbourne artist Lucas Casper has been commissioned by the Donker Council to paint about eight murals within six months. And I just want to try to liven up spaces that have otherwise maybe been like forgotten. 
and there's, there's a lot of areas like that around. But to see the next three murals, we actually have to drive out of town a little bit to this smaller place called Baranduda. I had a lot of fun painting three murals here in completely different locations. One being a community centre, the next being a skate park, and then the other one an underpass. And one of the most important things to me about these murals is I sort of wanted to tie them all together as one. So the locals in Baranduda could literally walk around and have their own miniature mural art tour. And this piece was the first out of the whole bunch. So you have a frog on the left, a rainbow lorikeet on the right, and I chose two characters that are just super vibrant, super colorful. It's right next to a community center and a childcare space. So it gives the kids something to point at, smile at, and it gives the adults something to relate to. And this next space was really awesome to paint because originally I actually got into art and painting through skateboarding and once I clocked off painting I could actually skate this place. When I first arrived in Wodonga we actually drove around looking for spaces, potential walls and areas and I pointed out this skate park. It had a lot of old concrete, really grippy and uh, just wasn't the most appealing looking park. And I definitely felt like I could just turn this around. With a few selected areas painted, nice and vibrant, it would make this whole place look brand new. So this little guy was pretty cool too. He was a big fan of the artwork. He actually got me to spray paint his skateboard there and he dropped in for the first time. We're going to go for a little trek here through the bush, jump over this puddle, and uh, end up at the underpass. When I first approached this underpass, the place was an absolute mess. There was just like hornet's nest everywhere, the concrete was completely gross and mucky, and it was just a really uninviting space. So. Throughout this one, the biggest level of importance was just put on color, vibrance, happiness, and a bit of like a floral theme throughout the whole thing. I just wanted to turn this place into something that was just really inviting and almost just lit you up with a smile. There wasn't an extreme level of importance put on particular parts or anything, it was just transforming the space all as one. And if you really want to see where this underpass started and finished, you can click the link up on the top right and see this complete video. So one last thing before we leave Baranduda, I actually painted one more piece. It had nothing to do with the previous works that you've seen, it was just a private commission by the, uh, the primary school. They have a B as their totem and the letter B as their logo and they wanted to incorporate it into this big yellow piece. So here it is. That's about it for Baranduda, and we're going to head back into the main part of town in Wodonga to check out the last four murals. But I was just going to say, if you like my work, if you're enjoying this video, please feel free to like and subscribe or chuck a comment down in the comment box. Follow me on any other socials. Any support is just awesome. It's great to hear your feedback because I love painting and I love making these videos. So here we are at a really awesome location again, and it's at a swim center. This is actually the first time I've ever painted a swim center, so I was really excited for this piece. Not only because I get to paint something that's sort of like oceany themed or water themed, but the location of it is right on the street, and there's nothing I love more than my murals to just be available for everybody. Within this piece, I decided to go with a big abstract wave. The place is called Waves, it's a swim center, there's really not much to it. 
I uh, just filled in the piece with my type of shapes and imagery and just tried to free flow the whole thing and just compositionally guide your eye around the piece. I've sort of intentionally painted it in an abstract way for people to get their own perspective of what it is. Like I've had a few people say it looks like a whale and I love hearing that stuff. When people get their own perspectives and make up their own narrative, it's just awesome. And yet again, another really cool news feature for this one and this is what it looked like. There's a new splash of colour in Wodonga with another mural completed in a prominent location. Waves Pool is the lucky canvas for mural artist Casper's most recent work with an abstract wave painted on one of the external walls. It's mural number seven in a project by Wodonga Council to spruce up community spaces and locals are loving it. It's been really awesome because like people have approached me and brought up like previous works and so many people are tapping on the shoulder sort of say hey, are you the person that's putting up all these murals? So it's really getting a lot of recognition and making people smile. Casper will be sticking around until August with plans to paint at least three more murals. So we're rocking up here to our third last mural and you're actually gonna see the painting that took me the longest out of everything. I had to paint a whole bunch of realism animals in this one and it took quite a while. It was a really, really awesome process though. So the animals that you can see painted on this is reference from a pond that's like just over the road here at a Fell Timber Community Center. So I went down there with my camera and spent about an hour just trying to get good shots of these ducks and geese and pelicans that were just floating along the water and painted them into the wall. So. If you're ever around there and checking that artwork out, you can actually probably notice little feather colors and other distinct markings on the animals and probably like walk over to the park and see which ones they're actually from. So it was really cool. The community was awesome on this one. There was a bunch of locals that were walking past every day. As this took me quite a while, I really got to know a few people and I had some just amazing interactions. And if you're wondering what type of detail gives you a headache when you're a mural artist, it's, uh, it's definitely got to be these feathers. So that was my second and last underpass project and super different from the first one. The next two murals that you'll see are different from the last as well. I finished up pretty strong and painting two of my favorite birds in the local community, which is the red crimson rosella and the galah. And this mural just here is the only one that actually took machinery. So this one I had to get a scissor lift because this bird is absolutely gigantic. And you can find it at the front of Little Lane Cafe on Stanley Street. We're going to jump in the car for the last time and head towards the last mural of this video. It's about six months all wrapped up in about 15 minutes, so I hope you've enjoyed the clip. Here at the, uh, the last mural that I did for the Lawrence Street Bridge, they just built this bridge and wanted to chuck a piece underneath, so I think it's my favorite piece of the whole project. I tried to sort of finish off strong, so um, yeah, got a galar in the center, greens in the background. Let's check it out though. I actually only just finished this mural. Um, going into lockdown and then going into another lockdown, it was pretty wild in Australia, but I just got this in in the right amount of days, finished off, and really, really loved the final result. You'll see pink flowers in the background, and they'll have reflections in them. The reflections are actually reflecting back of the flowers themselves. So I like to add little Easter eggs here and there when people go by and they can notice the little things, but the flowers were mostly just put in there to complement the galar itself.
The Melbourne artist adding splashes of colour to Wodonga's businesses and streets has completed his 10th and final mural. It's taken six months to create these murals with Sticky Beak, a galah, under a Lawrence Street bridge, the last one. The artist was commissioned by Wodonga Council for the now defunct Upstream Festival with blank spaces transformed into murals celebrating wildlife and nature. And it looks like that's the end of the video. So six months worth of work, uh, rainy days, lockdowns, sweat, sunburn, uh, running out of paint, sourcing this, and being in the middle of nowhere on my own. Uh, it was a wild adventure, but one that was just so much fun. And I can't wait to see what's next within my art career here in Melbourne. Uh, I'm going to travel around, paint more murals, and get up to more adventures. So... If you're into this video and you like what I do, uh, feel free to like and subscribe, share some love, leave a comment, do all that good stuff. But cheers for following along and um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.